If she had only been doing this for a year, that means she had averaged two groups per day. Though with taking weekends off it had to have been more, she had to have done more per day, or she had been F around for longer than the last year. I could not believe that I never suspected a thing. I had to stop thinking about the sheer numbers, or I would drive myself nuts. I drove away from the house in a daze, on autopilot as I made my way across town to the hotel. A sudden thought occurred to me that caused a chill to envelop my entire body, nearly causing me to black out in sheer panic. I realized that I had effort during all this. She had been doing this for what looked like a long time. I had only found out yesterday. God only knows how many times I had effort, while she was letting other men do the same without protection. I quickly pulled over to the side of the road, opened the door, and lost my lunch. After I had recovered, I knew exactly what I needed to do next. It took a few minutes for my head to clear well enough to figure out where I was and where the nearest hospital was located. I'm surprised I didn't get any speeding tickets on my way there. I ran into the hospital and to the clinic, nearly out of breath when I got to the counter. I pleaded with the receptionist behind the desk to fit me in. It was very important. She could clearly see my anxiety and was sympathetic, telling me she would do her best. I sat in the waiting room for what seemed like hours, but was in reality only 30 minutes or so. After being called to the back I explained to the doctor what had happened, almost retching again as I recounted the story. He seemed genuinely concerned about my predicament and recommended that a complete series of tests be done immediately. I agreed, of course, and spent the rest of my visit inspected. The doctor informed me that my results should be back within two weeks and that he would call me when they were in. I gave him my cell phone number, not wanting this call to go anywhere else, especially the house. I was still in a daze after the doctor's visit and couldn't think clearly enough to do anything but go to the hotel. I was angry, confused, hurt, and yes, scared too. I vaguely remember getting to my room and opening a fifth of bourbon from the bar. I woke the next morning with the worst hangover of my life. Seeing the empty bottle beside my bed, I was surprised I was still alive. The evening came back to me in bits and pieces as I slowly woke up. I remember sitting there, taking long pulls from the bottle, as I thought about what had happened to my life. I cried, angry at that bee for putting me in this position. I wept, thinking about what might happen if she had passed anything on to me. I became enraged thinking about all of this. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Patreon community. By becoming a patron, you'll get access to full parts of my videos much earlier than everyone else. Plus, you'll be supporting me to create even more awesome content for you. Check out the link in the description to join now. The thoughts in my head were not pretty. I have never been a violent person, but the ideas I had that night were violent indeed. I shrugged off the visions of stringing the sea up in the garage and skinning her alive. That would be too nice. I was going to make her suffer in ways she could never imagine all without laying a hand on her in anger. Originally, I had only wanted enough evidence to make sure she got next to nothing in a divorce. Now I wanted not only that, but for her to suffer a thousand times worse than I was suffering now. I knew exactly what my leverage would be. Two things were important to her that I knew about. Her family and her money. I would take both away from her. Her parents were the best people I had ever met. They would give a person anything they could if it would help and never ask for a thing in return. Her brothers and sisters were the same as her parents. Where the disgusting bee I married went bad, I have no idea. Her family was also extremely conservative, somewhere to the right of Jesse Helms. There was many a spirited family discussion where their views were made clear. In their view, adultery should be punishable by hanging in the town square. Prostitution should be punishable by public disembowelment, followed by hanging. Imagine their surprise when they found out their daughter was not only an adulteress, but a W-2. As for the money, that was even easier. I knew where it was. I would simply take it when she was out. What was she going to do, call the cops? After I took a shower and ate breakfast, I was feeling much better. My plans for revenge were coming together and replacing the sorrow I had been feeling the night before. I left the hotel feeling a little better about my situation now that I had some idea of what to do. I returned to the computer store and purchased a top-of-the-line photo printer and several packages of photo paper before I went over to the strip club again. I sat with Crystal and had a very long, sincere conversation with her about everything that had happened the day before. 
She was very pleased that I had visited a doctor and been tested for everything under the sun. She was even more pleased when I told her I would not put her at risk by doing anything with her until I was sure I had a clean bill of health. The more she and I talked, the closer we became. We were like kids on the first few dates, spilling everything that was on our minds. We had no reason to hold anything back. She told me about her checkered past. Some of it wasn't pretty. I told her everything about mine. I don't know why or how. We just seemed to connect and be able to trust each other on a very deep level. Returning to the hotel, I set up the new printer and worked my way through all of the pictures I had taken and captured from the cameras. I enhanced each one, making sure there was a clear shot of the sea face. I printed out the best ones, making multiple copies of each. I also visited the personal sites I had missed before and printed out each of her profiles and pictures. While on the web, I logged onto each of the sites and printed off all of the emails she had saved. I reviewed the tapes from the night before and saw she had entertained two more groups of guys. The first group with four guys, the other with seven. I captured all the relevant images and printed those out as well, struggling to keep my anger in check. I certainly had enough damning evidence to put my plan into motion anytime I wanted, but I wanted more. I wanted to be sure that there was no question of what she was. I needed to make sure there was no way she could extricate herself from what she had done. I not only wanted to hurt her, I wanted to destroy her. I went back to the PCAT, again sitting with Crystal and talking for a long time. I told her what I was planning and she loved my ideas, enhancing a few of them throughout our conversation. She was a devious little brat, no question about that. She suggested that when I was ready to present my evidence, that I also mail a copy of everything I had to the district attorney's office. Being a criminal justice major, she was sure the authorities would do something, but she wasn't sure about the evidentiary value of the pictures and the personal profiles from the web. At the very least, there would be some kind of investigation, one more knife to thrust in and twist. Crystal returned to the hotel with me after work, surprised at the opulence of the suite. She was like a kid in a candy store as she checked out the rooms, and her eyes got huge when she saw the bathtub. I told her to go ahead and use it if she wanted. She was naked and filling the tub with water before I finished speaking. I admit that I was having a hard time controlling myself with this beautiful girl in front of me. I had come to care for her and did not want to hurt her in any way, especially by passing on something I may have caught from the sea. I was about to leave the room when she called out to me. Wash me, please, she pleaded in a very cute little girl's voice. If you have never given a stunningly beautiful girl a bath, you are missing one of the most pleasurable experiences life has to offer. I was in heaven as I washed her from head to toe, lathering her up, rubbing her soft, supple skin, and not missing one square inch front or back. Her reactions just fueled my desire. Listening to her as I washed and caressed her body was indescribable. Seeing and feeling her squirming under my touch was so hot, we should have caught the room on fire. After toweling her off, making sure I didn't miss any spots, she stretched up and gave me a firm hug and a lingering kiss on my lips. I lifted her in my arms, carried her to the bed, and gently laid her down. I made a point of keeping my clothes on as I slowly and gently explored every inch of her body with my hands, mouth, and tongue. I reveled in the taste and texture of her chest. I held her close as she returned to earth, whispering thank you in my ear repeatedly. We laid there and talked through the evening, revealing even more of ourselves to each other. She told me her dreams, wants, needs, desires, goals, and passions. I shared all I was with her. I didn't know why we were doing this or have any idea where this might lead. I was very much enjoying the closeness the pure intimacy, which I had never shared with another person. We climbed out of bed after a while, and she asked to see the setup on my computer that I had told her about. I logged into the house server and started showing her the different cameras. I was a little nervous that the sea might be entertaining again. I was relieved when I switched to the game room and found it empty. I switched through the rest of the cameras one by one, the last being the main bedroom. I was stunned at what was on the screen. Crystal gasped and hugged me tight when the scene became clear. There was the W on the bed, my bed, surrounded by 12 guys. It appeared that they were just finishing their session. Once again, she cleaned her body as the guys got dressed and left. She laid there cleaning herself off for a very long time. She eventually got out of bed 
and we watched as she opened the envelope that was on the nightstand and counted out $7,500. I was able to maintain my composure, for a while anyway. I rewound the recording, captured images, and printed them out with Crystal holding me the entire time. I checked back through the tape and found yet another session earlier in the afternoon, not long after I had been to the house. I captured and printed the images from this humiliation as well. I finally let go and broke down. I couldn't help it. I couldn't hold it in any longer. Crystal led me to the bed and lay down beside me, holding me in her arms and whispering comforting words softly in my ear. I eventually drifted off to sleep, completely and totally emotionally drained. When I awoke the next morning, Crystal was still there holding me. I can't begin to describe how good that felt. After waking up enough to be somewhat coherent, I reminded her that she was late for work. She told me she had called in for the day. She said I needed someone here with me, and I didn't argue. We had a very serious talk that morning during breakfast. Crystal was genuinely worried about my mental well-being. We agreed that it was time to take care of this. If I didn't do it now it would destroy me. I couldn't handle letting this go on any longer. It was time for it to stop. There were a few more details to take care of, and then it would be over. I'll admit that what I did next was probably illegal as hell. Ask me if I care. I fired up the computer, printed out a power of attorney, and forged the C signature, giving me sole power over all our joint holdings. I made a quick visit to my longtime lawyer, and had everything we held jointly placed in my name only, the house, cars, vacation cabin, property, and brokerage accounts. Surprisingly, this was a relatively quick and painless thing to do. I also visited the bank and removed her name from all of our accounts. I left one account for her, with a $1 balance, laughing silently to myself during the entire process. While I was at the bank, I signed the necessary paperwork to have all of our credit cards cancelled in two days, and had a new one issued to me under a completely new account. Finally, I visited my real estate broker and placed the house on the market for immediate sale. I could never live there again. With these details taken care of it, was time to take advantage of overnight delivery. I returned to the hotel after a quick stop at an office supply warehouse. Crystal helped me collate the pictures, profiles, and emails, and place them in envelopes. I printed out address labels for her parents, two brothers, three sisters, the district attorney, the chief of police, her church, two local newspapers, and the half dozen of her friends I had addresses for. We left the hotel and stopped at the first express mail store we saw and sent the envelopes off. I was so anxious I was bouncing off the walls. I had accepted she was a filthy W. I was in the process of getting her out of my life for good, but it still felt strange to be doing this to someone I had once cared for. As I said earlier, I have never been a violent person. Well, I have never been a vindictive person either. I was not used to doing something like this. I couldn't shut all of my emotions off all at once. Crystal could tell I was shocked at what I was doing and reminded me, in great detail, why I needed to do it. There was one last item to take care of. We returned to the hotel and checked the cameras at the house, finding it empty. I rewound and saw that the sea had left about an hour before, dressed to the nines. I figured she would be selling her for a few hours, more than enough time for me to do what needed to be done. I told Crystal to wait for me here, that I would be back in an hour or so. She was not happy to let me go alone. She wanted to be there for moral support if I needed it. I assured her I would be fine and left after a tight hug and gentle kiss. I raced across town to the house, letting myself in through the garage. I quickly went to the office and opened the safe, finding it even fuller than it was a couple of days ago. I emptied the safe into a large duffel bag and raced back to the hotel. We spread the money on one of the beds and counted, then recounted and counted again to make sure. The final tally was just short of a million dollars. We were both completely speechless as we sat there staring at the stacks of bills. Later that night was most amusing. We watched as the C came home, looking rather well F, and went to place her money in the safe. I had never heard anyone scream that loud, nor had I ever heard such obscenities spewed. I had to laugh as she spent the night pacing the house cussing like a sailor. If that was amusing, what happened the next morning was hysterical. Her parents were the first to call her. I could not hear their side of the conversation, but I could hear the sea trying to deny everything in a shaking voice. She ended up slamming the phone down, 
curling up in a ball in the middle of the floor and bawling her eyes out. I almost felt sorry for her. Over the next few hours, the phone rang several more times. Each time it was someone who had received one of the packages I sent, or so I gathered from the W side of the conversation. Each time she tried to deny everything, only to hang up on whomever it was she was talking with and go back to crying. I suddenly realized that I had forgotten to send copies to her also. I quickly printed out everything I had, placed it in an envelope, and called a courier service. I watched a half hour later as she opened the envelope. Her face drained of all color as she slumped to the floor, stunned and shaken. I hoped she was feeling at least 10% of what I had felt over the last few days. The days, weeks, and months flew by after exposing her for what she was. I was in contact with her siblings, friends, and parents. Each of them offered their sympathies for what had happened and assured me their doors would always be open. Nobody knew that I was the one who had exposed her, and it didn't really matter anyway. I finally got a call from the doctor's office, giving me the good news and the bad. I didn't have anything terminal or anything that couldn't be cured. I took a battery of medications for a while, finally getting a clean bill of health. I still get tested for those things that don't show up right away, and will continue to do so for a very long time. The C was arrested and charged with prostitution and money laundering. She didn't have any funds to mount a defense and was easily convicted. She was sentenced to a very long prison term because of the flagrancy of her actions and the fact that she not only didn't deny anything, but was defensive about her extracurricular activities. The authorities are still wondering what happened to the money she had to have made. I only saw her once since the day I sent the envelopes out, and that was in court for our divorce. She did not contest anything, and the judge did not give her anything. The house sold a few months later. I hired movers to go in and retrieve my personal belongings. I could not even think about setting foot in that place again. Everything I didn't want was thrown away at the landfill. I thought about donating it to charity, but didn't want to subject anyone to the filth it was associated with. With the money I took from the sea and from the sale of the house, I had a very nice nest egg. I bought a very nice very large new house in a different neighborhood. I paid off the student loans for Crystal, Brittany, and Kayla, without them knowing, and set up a fund to pay for their tuition and books through the rest of their schooling. Somehow, through all of this, Crystal and I fell deeply in love. She moved into my new house a few months after this ordeal was over, and has been here ever since turning it into a true home. We will be getting married in a few months and could not be happier. It does not worry me that she is a self-professed S, she is my S. Kayla and Brittany visit on occasion, sometimes to just chat, and other times for more intimate undertakings.